The 9-11 attacks in New York woke the world up to the reality of terrorism. The lashkar e taiba is one of the many manifestations of this menace, one of the biggest and deadliest of the Kashmiri-focused terror groups. AsiaNet Newsable digs deep into how this Pakistan-bred outfit evolved. What is their motive? Who are their leaders? How do they financially sustain their terror activities? What goes behind their recruitment? How do they operate to spread terror? What has the international response been so far and more? We decode the Lashkar e Taiba. छब्बीस ग्यारह दो हजार आठ को मैं मेरे फैमिली के साथ मेरे पप्पा मेरे भाई और मैं हम तीनों पुना जाने जाने के लिए बैंड्र से सीएसटी गए थे पुना हम बड़े भाई को मिलने जा रहे थे सीएसटी में बारह तंडल प्लेटफॉर्म के सामने बैठे उतने में मेरा भाई बोला कि मुझे टॉयलेट आया पप्पा बोले कि तू टॉयलेट जाके आ जा फिर हम टिकट निकाल के जाएंगे जैसे ही वो टॉयलेट को गया गोली फायरिंग हुई और बॉम्ब स्पॉट हुआ हम भागने की कोशिश की तो कसाब की गोली आके मेरे राइट पेड़ में लगी मैं गिर गई बेहोश हो गई पर बेहोश होने के पहले मैंने उस आतंकवादी को देख लिया था जो अंधाधुन गोली फायरिंग कर रहा था जिसके हाथ में बड़ी सी बंदूक थी और भुटका सरी का शख्स था फिर वहाँ मेरे आंखों के सामने मैंने देखा कई लोग मरे थे घायल थे किसी को सर में गोली लग रही है किसी को पेड़ में किसी के हाथ में तब मुझे वहाँ कुछ समझ में नहीं आया कहीं ऑफिसर कहीं लोग शहीद हुए वहाँ पर November 26, 2008, Mumbai. The world witnessed perhaps the most notorious, devastating and dastardly terrorist attacks ever. The 60-hour siege carried out by 10 Lashkar-e-Taiba terrorists was a bloodbath at six landmarks that claimed the lives of 166 people, including 26 foreigners of 15 nationalities. While conducting the trial against the Ajmal Kasab, who was a Pakistani terrorist, that there was a deep-rooted criminal conspiracy was hatched on the soil of Pakistan. And the whole conspiracy was hatched by the terrorist organization lashkar e toiba which was supervised by Pakistan army officials. Well, it shows that they were actively engaged in all manner of terrorist activities. It got, went far beyond you know, Lashkar's original intent to harass the Indians in uh, Jammu and Kashmir. Um, and now they're kind of becoming a full-blown jihadist element. Um, and that was a departure from what they normally had been. In 1984, Zakir Rahman Lakhvi organized a group of Ahle Hadith Muslims from Pakistan to wage jihad against the Soviets in Afghanistan. A year later, Hafiz Said and Zafar Iqbal, two professors at Lahore University, formed the Jamaat Uddawa as a missionary group dedicated to the tenets of Ahle Hadith Islam. In 1986, Lakhvi merged his outfit with JUD to form the Markaz al Dawa Wal Irshad MDI. Abdullah Azam, Osama bin Laden's mentor and the father of modern global jihad, was one of the co founders of MDI. After the Soviet withdrawal, Pakistan appropriated the assets created during the Afghan war to wage a proxy war against India in Jammu and Kashmir. In 1990, LET, also known as the Army of the Pure or Army of the Righteous, was launched as a separate military wing of MDI. 
This Wahhabi group has reportedly been supported by Pakistan's Inter-Service Intelligence, ISI, as one of the many paramilitary groups used by Pakistan as proxy forces to create instability in India. That the founder of Lashkar of Toiba, Hafiz Zahid, had openly challenging the sovereignty of our government. Not only that, he is provoking the youth of Pakistan. And he says that there should be a jihad against the government of India. So I think the Pakistan, and as unless Pakistan government takes a stern action, this is not going to stop. Founded by Hafiz Saeed and co-founded by Zakiu Rehman Lakhvi, the organization had its headquarters in Muridke near Lahore, Pakistan. Subsequent to the 9-11 terrorist attacks, LET is reported to have moved its headquarters to Muzaffarabad in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir, POK. The mean age when a recruit joins LET is 16.95 years, while the militants' mean age at the time of their death is 21 years. The vast majority of LET's fighters are recruited from Pakistan's Punjab province. LET's training is divided into three parts. Dora e Ama, basic training, Dora e Sufa, religious training, and Dora e Khasa, specialized training for guerrilla warfare. In addition to the three basic stages, selected cadres may receive special training for specific skills related to espionage, subversion, sabotage, and maritime operations. During the 1990s, most of LET operations were conducted in Jammu and Kashmir, where the organization was known for targeting civilians and fidain attacks, LET's term for suicide attacks against security forces. The December 2000 Fidayan attack against the Delhi Red Fort was one of the first terrorist attacks by LET outside Jammu and Kashmir. In December 2001, Jesh-e Mohammed, JEM and LET attacks on the Indian Parliament steered Pakistan and India to the verge of a conventional war. In response to international pressure, Pakistan's then President Parvez Musharraf banned the MDI and LET. However, the actions by the state remained cosmetic with no effect on LET's capabilities or its financial resources in particular. The July 2006 bomb blasts against the Mumbai local rail network that killed more than 200 people was one of LET's acts displaying its intent. The 2008 Mumbai terror attacks put to rest any doubts about LET's threat to international community. Obviously, we take the Indian intelligence seriously. I think it's irrefutable that those two men were involved in the Mumbai terror attacks. At the same time, we need support from the Pakistani government for our efforts in Afghanistan. And that has complicated everything that we've done relative to Lashkar over the last 20, 30 years. Lashkar e Taiba has today evolved from a local threat focused against India to a global jihadist threat. Stay tuned as we continue to decode the Lashkar and its funding, modus operandi and current threat perception.